This episode is sponsored by Zenro Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and our accessories at zenroclothingco.com and be sure to use offer code SOCRATES at checkout for 20% off select items. Also, if you're not into uh, spending the money, just check out the Zenro Radio playlist. Zenrealclothingco.com, music for your everyday. This episode also is sponsored by The Pony and Bakery. If you're located in the Pony area of Scarborough, Toronto, be sure to check out The Pony and Bakery, say what's up to Arville, and uh, pick up a donut or two. Bake daily, crafted with love. This episode also is sponsored by Podbean. Podbean is the podcasting platform of choice. It's the one that me and Mish use, and um, it's great, you know, if you're uh, looking to start that DIY podcast yourself definitely check out podbean use uh the link podbean.com slash socratic gamers and gain one month of unlimited podcasting for free test it out build that content uh anyone could podcast right vish yep start a start a podcast and uh get your ideas out there all right enjoy the episode all right, so if you checked out the last podcast, you probably heard that we had a bunch of other topics that we want to talk about, but then it just didn't feel right because uh, we were talking about so much about like enlightenment and understanding what enlightenment is. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you haven't listened to that, go check it out. I actually create a PowerPoint breakdown of it because um, I had been talking about that stuff for for a while. But also, I was primed during that week, so if you want to check it out, it's enlightenmentunderstood.gotlemonfire.com. Okay, so we're going to start off with, I guess, metrics. So the stats app for Tesla, Vish, you're looking into it, you're saying it's the best? Yeah, I guess there's multiple apps, um, but I heard that this is the best So, it's, So what, what does it do exactly? Like, So what is stats, statistics? Okay, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's um, keeping a record like a record of everything that's happening that's phone. happening on, yeah, your, totally. on, your, on your car like how often you're charging uh how much you're driving your driving efficiency um, right. and all that kind of stuff tells you it's kind of like breaking it down like how like you get to see how it is working in the summer how it's in the winter and like how your battery oh, that's cool how your battery health is yeah, 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 yeah. like as much information and they keep adding stuff to it so it's similar to like bio biometrics yeah like my, for the car uh, like right my garmin right right yeah but for the car yeah and That's everything's done cool. through like there's not so nothing you're inputting the only thing you're inputting is in the beginning where it's like what is your a rate of um electricity Driving, charge that oh, you okay. whatever that is and then it's like what is your average gas charge so it's kind of giving you like how much money you've potentially spent in charging and how much money if you had gas driving the same amount of miles oh i, I love that about the the tesla display like when you check it out at the actual store remember you were showing us that little uh program Mm -hmm. where you you can input how much you would have saved like basically the exact same thing it it converts your electric wattage to how much it would have cost in gas right you know at that time and that, that was one of the defining points of tesla for me how much money you save off of um not not using gas yeah you know Especially because of the fluctuation, because right now gas is so expensive. Yeah, I heard it's expensive because of that whole, um, um, that ransomware that happened in that pipeline. Oh, so it, so it did affect us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It's been like uh, I think uh, prices have been going. I'm not sure if it affected us per okay. se, but I know it's in, in has affected in America. Yeah, because because it could have been shortage. having a yeah like a trail down effect to us too. Yeah, right, right, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. You, you were we were talking about that before, and you're yeah. saying it's affecting some parts of the U.S. Yeah, but it yeah it does look like actually speaking of the network effects, it's weird with the COVID thing right now. I post on my story, but the the Starbucks people being like, make sure you keep that <laughs> tray because there's a labor shortage. And I was like, what? What's going on? And then I was also noticing people on social media that live in the U.S. They were they're ripping on people not wanting to go back to work because yeah. of the the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, at the same time, it's like, yeah, maybe they just hated their jobs, or you know. No, I, I think it's just because they have money. No, right, right, right. But right. but but that's at the end of the day, it's like. Why would they go back to work when they have? That's money? what I mean. Yeah. yeah. But, but if you were inspired by your job, you just go back. Yeah, it depends. Because you'd want to do it. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. because there are certain things you would do for free, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And if money was a part of that, it's great. If money's not a part of that, whatever. Sure. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, you're saying so stats app. Yeah, so it's like you know getting how much. 
you're getting to see like a wider like how you're driving your car like what is your he- health of the battery right when in overall like it, you would the more you use it the more you get to see the actual data because that's all stats statistics right. of right. how your car is doing and then what i thought was kind of interesting was um when you do open it to like again with these ios apps now you have to allow it to have your data yeah. right so if you do that you get to see how your car is doing compared to other model 3 cars also using the app oh that's cool so it's like so it's are like you shared data like, like yeah, 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 yeah 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 so it's like like how you're using your car is it the most um, efficient way yeah are you to other people exactly and you're, maybe if you're having issues with your car and it's like you're at the other end where it's like you're, you're far away from the general so um, maybe you should check out what's going yeah, on yeah oh that's really fascinating yeah, yeah. huh that okay that that's pretty cool it, it's sort of like um like like on the watch like the the biometrics for like mm-hmm, watches like mm-hmm, apple watch and mm-hmm. stuff they they can tell you if you're oh you might be having a heart attack right now or like mm-hmm. uh you should pay attention to this because yeah, 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 something's yeah. abnormal right right you know right. i feel like numbers is so important you know mm-hmm. especially in not not just purchasing things but i guess like does that does that in a way make us almost like cyborgs more um well you know what i mean like yeah i think in some ways yes because we are all like chemistry body like the way it works is totally, all yeah. the same way for almost everybody right? All right I, I actually actually my, my question to you is this just like we use gas cars before and now we're using mm-hmm. electric cars yeah and it makes it seem like we're in the future with electric cars mm-hmm. because of like the stats app and all of the things sure does it seem archaic not to analyze your biomechanics of your own human body or does it seem archaic? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like To not do that? Yeah, yeah, I guess so, yeah. Because it's, you're, if you believe in, like, yeah, how much functionality you want to get out of your body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in a so, way. But, but, that, but that's why I, the, I phrase the question of, like, are we cyborgs now? Because if you actually look at what these biomechanic analyses are doing, they're mm-hmm. giving you data, like, data yeah. about something you would have never had. You're You're on another level as compared to somebody who's eyeballing it, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, if you use a gas car, you don't have all of the functionality that this electric car does that's connected to all these apps. Yeah. So you're, it feels like you're archaic. It feels like you're in the past. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. right. And I, I wonder if we're quickly venturing towards that for our bodies as well. Well, I think, I mean, these those um, body apps or whatever, it's like those are also very popular too, right? So they are doing... Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. I remember, like, when the first time they were bringing the sleep apps, it's like... Yeah, that was a crazy. Actually, I remember when the the iPhone was the first uh, step counter that you could <laughs> accessibly have. On right, the, right. You know. Yeah, yeah. There were there were step counters before, but you'd have to purchase like an in, individual step yeah, counter. Yeah, but yeah. like the iPhone actually built in a step counter, mm-hmm. and that was that was revolutionary because you're like, wow, I can I can track my steps. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. You get into the sleep, you're like, wow, I can track yeah. my sleep. No, Apple really focused on that too. Like you can see that they have a health app. Yeah. And it connects to all the other apps if they're using, yeah, like, totally. um, uh, what do you call it? like third-party apps, too, if they want to use it. Yeah, yeah. And you get to see it all in one page, all well, the different I, information. I kind of want to see you buy the Apple Watch now, <laughs> j- just for the biomechanics. Like, the, like, there are other... So the only reason why I don't like the Apple Watch, again, is the battery life. You know, And the durability, sure, because you can't use that in... You can't use the Apple Watch in, like, a sauna or something, right? Because of the pressurized heat, it, it's yeah. not. Good I'm not for, sure. Right? Well, no, they're no, going to keep doing that, that stuff. Right? They're going to keep maybe make it better. Right? Iterating. It, it's not. It's not where I need it to be yet. Sure. You know. Yeah. And but but like um, that, that's why I got the Garmin because it's it's built for like mm-hmm. ice and. Uh, are you, you asking something about that? No, no, no. no like. Uh... No, no, no. Yeah, keep going, keep going. Sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, Vish is currently watching. Uh, <laughs> well, we have it playing in the background just so that I can remember some of the things from the stats app. Yeah, so just interject whenever you, you yeah, see something. Yeah, if, if there's like, something oh, this is cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so I I think it would be, it'd be really interesting to see you get... Like, so, okay, I, I was saying that I don't think that the Apple Watch is worth it because I wouldn't use half the apps on it, mm-hmm. right? But 
I think one of the biggest things about the Apple Watch is the biometric feedback. Now that I think about it, it's just like the yeah. It's just like the uh, stats app for the Tesla, mm-hmm. you know, except this one's more integrated because it's built for iPhones. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm sure the analyses will be a lot better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think there's a huge divide between like, okay, so you see it with like USC fighters. Mm. Okay, before they would use bro science, they'd be like, okay, this is how you train, right? The best one's Brian Ortega. He had to leave his old team because they were like using bro science on him. Okay. You know, like push yeah, your yeah, body yeah. to the limit. We're going to do this, like that old school Rocky style mm-hmm. training. Mm-hmm. But then he teamed up with actual scientists. And now they tell him like when your body's optimal, when it's not optimal. Right. Today you need a rest day, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and, and all that stuff. And it almost seems like if you look at it contrasted, why would you not enter into the scientific biometric world? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you want to, yeah, especially if you're a fighter, I think you would do that. But you yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, for sure, for as a fighter. But it almost seems well, like I'm saying like like that would should be even more. <laughs> oh, even more, yeah, totally, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah totally. But it, it's so interesting to see the salience of of people who are left in the dust using old thinking and becoming a cyborg. Right. I'm, I'm gonna call anybody with like a biometric analyzer now a cyborg. Sure. You know. Yeah. 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 Because essentially you're you're integrating. Mm-hmm. You, there, there's no plugins, but you're using a laser to analyze yeah, yeah, yeah. your heart rate, your blood pressure, yeah, 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 or your, yeah, not, yeah. not blood pressure, sorry, uh, your like oxygen level, right, right, in right. your blood. Yeah, I mean, even the the Apple Watch has got that. The new ones have that, the EKG thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, that's a big thing that's you recently coming out. Like yeah. the, I wonder what's the next one. What they're gonna have in the next Apple Watch iteration. Like what? Because yeah. each one, they have something different. New. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. Yeah. Like, like, I know I would use it for, like, swimming and stuff like that because they do. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah that, that's what I mean. Yeah. So it's like... Like, keeping track of my laps. Cause yeah, I, I was cause, about cause to say. When yeah. I was doing it before going to swim, I was like, okay, I kept track of, like, the first five. And then I... Hey, could, like, wait, what, I lost what, track. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, sometimes you need, like, you do need biometric feedback. Mm-hmm. So, or, another good example is uh, I have... There's this thing that alert this like the watch the Garmin it alerts me if my my heart rate is over 100 and I've been sitting still for 15 minutes because it's like right. morning warning abnormal heart rate there's uh-huh. something wrong calm yeah, yourself yeah, down right, right 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 it like actually like buzzes like yeah, 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 yeah. right and there have been moments when I felt like like if I feel really stressed in that situation. And I could feel it, right? You're like, I'm relying on my intuition of being like, oh, I don't feel good, mm-hmm. right? But what? But who knows? Like, let's just ride this and this feeling out. But then when my watch blares a second later, because it also notices that I'm not right, 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 doing right. well, yeah, 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 it makes me okay. Wait, hold on, pause, collect myself, yeah, and then yeah, move yeah. forward, right, right. But if I didn't have that, I would have just powered through that sensation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like okay, this is just what it is. You know, but then yeah. I've been in a high stress situation for a while. Right. You know? Yeah, and, yeah. and again, it's just like your your lap thing. It's like it would have required excess brain power on your part to be like, okay, this is lap seven, this is lap eight, <laughs> this is lap nine. Yeah, yeah, Rather yeah. than just being in the moment and right. letting it happen. And then you're seeing your timing of your lap. So if it's slowing down. Yes. Like, yeah. like where you have started to like peak, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then you get to see over time the like if you keep doing it more and more and it's like okay your peak is getting later and later yes yeah that's what i mean that's yeah. exactly what i mean yeah. like that's why i think that's why i truly think that having a biometric scanner even though it kind of like freaks people like my my parents are well my mom i oh, no, sorry my dad and my sister are both on it now because i like sold them on it i was like you just just need it it's and they're like i i don't know what i was doing without it mm-hmm. because it's it's so beneficial, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. My mom, she's just too freaked out. Like, we gave her my, my sister's old Apple Watch, and she, like, used it for a bit. And then she's like, I don't like all that information about me. And, like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but it's like, but why wouldn't you want the information? Right. I mean, it's it's more about, like, where what level of comfortability you are with that kind of thing, right? Or, or your your desire to not face the facts. Like, for, for example, so remember when um, Tara was testing how to do blood pressure on me and then through those tests we found out that i had high blood pressure Mm -hmm. and i was like oh crap i need to bring this down so like it forced me the information forced me to re re rejig my entire lifestyle you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. whereas but but that that takes a a type of person Mm -hmm. 
Whereas I'm assuming my mom is just like, I don't want to deal with that. You know, it's like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's just going to stress me out more. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah it, just, it reminded me of like the, um, I guess too much information. Not yeah. No, 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 not, not the like, information thing. Like the, like the, um, telling your heart rate, like when it's abnormal, oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like, I think of the Apple watch when the Let's first had someone. Yeah, yeah, it's had that with um with the heart rhythm thing. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then oh, normal heart rate. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And and they've detected. Um, so they went to the doctor and they checked it and it's like, oh, you have like an, it's an abnormal heart. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, like the fall detection, that was something that's on the Apple Watch. Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. That yeah. uh would call the nine one one right away. Yeah, totally. Uh, unless you cancel it or whatever. Yeah. Wow, well, you made me want to get an Apple Watch now. <laughs> but I, I mean, like. <laughs> I, I like my car. It's the battery life. If if the battery wasn't so bad, I probably would revert yeah, back yeah, to an yeah. Apple Watch. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I think I really do think it's a worthwhile investment now that we're like talking about it. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever works for you, right? I mean, if something that you're looking for specifically isn't in an Apple Watch, but is in some other device, it's true. This is nothing. Totally. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But but the fundamental premise is the same. You're getting biofeedback right. information. Exactly. Like I, I think. I think. Well, I think. I mean, that, so that's important. why like Apple's really putting a lot of R and D in this thing. Yeah. Uh, totally. Especially working with like doctors to figure out like for the, sure. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. if your doctor also knows all your information, or you yes. can show what's yes. been going on throughout, because you don't, you only see your doctor every so often. Totally. But then if you've got a thing that's keeping track of everything, then it's like, oh, they can see your overall picture for sure for sure and and actually what i find interesting as well is if you pair this if you pair biofeedback they, they need to figure out an easier way to do this because right now i'm doing it manually it would be cooler if like i just took a photo of it which which it does have a mm. an aspect of it but like food tracking so it's like what fuel are you putting into your body and how is that affecting your your output mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. because because like you were saying with the doctor thing, if I were to go to the doctor, because I've been tracking everything, I I just basically pretend like I'm a robot now. Right. Like I, I pretend like my consciousness is the pilot for this vehicle called my body mm-hmm. now, you know? And like you were saying, your your doctor now knows. So if I were to go to my doctor, I'm like, he's like, oh, it seems like you have this. I'm like, yeah, look at what I've been eating. And he'll look and he's like, oh, this is your problem. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the more information, the better, I think. Yeah, because we tend to forget like when... Like, like well, we, we would assume, oh, yeah, I have a healthy diet. Yeah, it's like, yeah. well, when was the last time you ate a vegetable? I could pull up my thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's the best way to, like, that, that's that's the good thing about these things. Yeah, and I feel like, I feel like just, like, optimizing the Tesla mm-hmm. is, like, you need to optimize your body mm-hmm. in this way. Mm-hmm. Well, especially, yeah, you're with your body more. I know, <laughs> right? But, but if you actually think about it like this, like if you actually think of it like my conscious awareness is the pilot of my vehicle mm-hmm. then it, it it's like you're you're playing a video game simulation of your life at yeah, that point. Yeah, you know what right, I mean? right. then you're yeah, like yeah. you're like I'm just piloting this thing well yeah i mean it reminds me of like it's it's like video games too it's like i was playing um subnautica yeah, yeah, and, yeah totally yeah, uh, okay. it's like oh you're water level is down you got to drink some water it's like totally, it's like yeah. oh you need but, food or whatever we do that already yeah, you know, yeah like yeah, in yeah. red dead redemption right it's right like, yeah, yeah, yeah time yeah. to eat yeah but yeah yeah but like right. this one like these their specific games are specifically called survival right so it's oh, okay totally yeah you need to focus on all that kind of thing yeah. not just exploring or whatever you're doing but also your food intake your water intake right. your health you're like right. keeping the, all that track. totally right yeah. so now i wonder if if with that I wonder if those games are priming us to become more robotic in the future. Mm. You know, like I wonder mm-hmm. if the the generation uh, maybe generation they get more used to yeah I, console. Yeah, I think they will get more used to these sort of app, apps or yeah. devices that totally, they're more so. prone to using. And then it won't be such a far stretch from being like a cyborg at that point. Mm-hmm. And then when they offer us the chips in our bodies, like we're all going to take yeah, it. Yeah, I think by that time, yeah, we should be normal for it. <laughs> Could, all right, all right. But actually, like if you think about um, cyberpunk, right? Yeah. If if I had the option, if there was no pain, let's say there's no barrier because I hate pain, so <laughs> we're just gonna avoid pain. If you know, it's funny. Everyone's like, "Oh, the root of all su- like suffering, right?" Mm. Everybody's trying to avoid suffering. Mm. I'm like, "No, no, I understand how to quiet suffering. My real issue is pain." But I guess the suffering is me wanting to avoid pain. Right. But anyways, that's a side note. Uh, so if there was no pain, right? 
Yeah. And you could implant eyes with augmented reality built in. So you have the heads up display. <laughs> yeah. Instead of having to wear a watch, your eyes will already be built into it. Yeah, yeah, why yeah. why would yeah. you not take that? Right, right. Didn't they do that? Isn't they that did? in what? Cyberpunk? Yeah, that's why I brought it up. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like those are the first thing that you do. <laughs> yeah, right? those are the first thing you do. You need yeah, an upgrade yeah, yeah. so that yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they switch yeah. out your body part for like something. Right. Yeah. Like they, your hand needs to be a certain yeah, way so they I, I like, give you a hand. I, I can see that. It's, this seems like a plausible thing, yes, eventually. Like, yeah. we're taking your steps towards, towards it, right? It. Then there's, like, you know, I think the first step is getting have, getting used to something in front of your eyes. So if, if, that, that's why we're if Apple the glasses, glasses yeah, exactly. ends up becoming that's a thing, it's like this is how I'm you're... jumping 20 steps ahead, yeah. but they're doing it incrementally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if they're like, hey, we're going to replace your eyes with uh, augmented reality, people would freak out. But you're like, mm-hmm. you know, we understand glasses are really annoying. Try some contacts. <laughs> and you're like, oh, contacts are also really annoying. Mm. Try some new eyes. Right. Right. But it, like they were saying with uh, Neuralink, it's always going to start off with people who need it. So it's going to be yeah, the course. blind who are going to get it first. Mm-hmm. And like, oh, I could suddenly see. Mm-hmm. You're like, wait, wait, wait. You're, you have 2020 vision? I want 2020 vision, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And, and then it'll start to become a natural. Na- I yeah. really do think we're going to hit this point where we converge and become like robots. I think so. I think it just seems inevitable. Inevitable. Like we have our phones on us 24 hours, right? So it's like that's, you know, once that's attached to you, like it's already kind of attached to you, but like once it's in you, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It just seems like it's going to go that way. But how do you feel about, like, I feel like there's two classes of people that I think we brought this up before, but they, they agree with this and they hate it. Mm Mm-hmm. I feel like the people that hate are just going to be left in the dust. It's like, why would you not be into this? Yeah, there'd probably be like two, as there always is, like two um, thoughts of the world, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. something like that. It's like, I think majority of people will be going in with technology. I think so too. Yeah. Like, like I see it all the time. Like, you know, like how once things become, when you show how it's um, what do you call it? like efficient and easier. Yeah, yeah. It, that's just what people are going to go towards. Like yeah, with totally. now, like people are just getting like, this is still rudimentary in a sense, but like going from wired to wireless. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Right? But it, that's because it became easier. You can just, you know, you don't have to worry about wires. Yeah. Wires are up so anymore. like annoying. Yeah, exactly. But, but the, so problem, that's, the problem with the wire, the wireless though is charging. No, I know. So but it's, it's always comes down to battery, you know, it's like, I, I need like, I don't like, I don't like having to charge something. You know, right? Because you have to wait in that lag time of not using it. So I was like, "Oh man." Well, well, you're not using it all the time, right? You just put it back in the same case. You're talking about. Um, you're We're talking about AirPods. Yeah, I'm talking about just wireless tech, like wireless headphones, like Beats. Uh-huh. My dad has those Beats. Okay, and he has to like plug them in every once in a while to mm-hmm. recharge them. It's like, oh, it's kind of tedious and like annoying. Actually, one other thing, one thing I do love about Apple is that it's its ecosystem of connectivity is really powerful. So what I mean by that is if I open the AirPods, because I did this to myself, I was like, hey, mom, I I ran out of uh, headphones. Can I just borrow your AirPods? She's like, yeah, sure. So you just open the AirPods next to my phone, and it's like, hey, I noticed this. Mm -hmm. Whereas I have these uh, wireless headphones Mm -hmm. that I got off Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you have to go into the Bluetooth setting, you have to disconnect, Mm -hmm. and then it's like, oh no, they paired to my computer, Mm -hmm. not my phone. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh my God, now I have to like detach it. It's so annoying. I do love Apple for that, that they're able to. Well, that's the thing, right? They've focused on um, like uh, their ecosystem, right? It's just, they know that this, these things are annoying, that they would, they have figured out a way to make it so much simpler. So much simpler. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for I'm excited for that robotic life. <laughs> but oh okay, I was gonna say, um, one of the arguments is that there's gonna be an income inequality. There's gonna be like the people that have tech and the people that don't have tech, right? Because it's expensive. I think it depends. Uh, uh, wait, I'm gonna give you an example. So iPhones I think it depends. Yeah. No, it, it depends, right, but but so everyone like, all right, so there was a period of time when everyone had a flip phone or, or an iPhone. Mm-hmm. iPhone became affluent. Yep. It was affluent. It's, a, yeah, it's yeah, only for affluent right, people. Right, right. But now, because of contracts, everyone's got iPhone 11s. You know, they're just like, 
I just build it into my contract and I'll just pay monthly. Well, I, I don't want to say I'm talking about like, sure, that's probably in the Western world. Right. But it's like, oh, I see what you're saying. Like if you're, there's going to be a divide if we talk between, about, um, yeah, but even then countries. it's like, yeah, but even then, no, 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 wait, hold on. In the Philippines, everyone's got an iPhone now. Everyone's got an iPhone. Like even all my cousins got iPhones uh, be- uh, because it's built into their contract system. They don't have to pay for it. I, again, it depends on the country, I guess. So it's like in India, it's like not everyone has an iPhone. It depends, you know, but there's also an Indian tax, right? Remember you're saying that... Well, for anything that's coming from outside, but right, they, so, they but tend to go towards... Uh, India-based products. Well, no, no, the thing is, like, what the, the, the thing with India is, like, if you're going to manufacture in India, then you're going to, your cuts, your costs will be less. Right. Um, so that's kind of influencing them to go and manufacture right, but, but in that's, India. that's not a, that's not a money issue, that's an, that's a country policy issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? So it's right. like... But what, what, what I was mainly was saying is like smartphones are everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. It doesn't have, no, I'm just using iPhone. I know, I know. But I'm there. saying like it was at the time when iPhone was the only one doing this. Yes. Yeah. It was for the affluent. But now it's like there's so many copies of the, Androids. But, but, but that's what I mean. So it's yeah. like people are like there's going to be a divide between the have and the have not. And I'm like, no, the technology is going to figure out a way to scale itself up so that it can reduce its pricing. Mm-hmm. Like literally free. They they just sign up for a contract and you get a free iPhone. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter what like right. level it is. Right. Like maybe you won't get the iPhone 12 Pro, mm-hmm. but you'll have some iPhone. So it's like even. Like, yeah. No, I think that's that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it will be necessarily a divide. Like. Yeah. No, what, I don't either. Maybe yeah. what what kind of uh, what kind of ocular optics do you have? Oh, I have the uh, Synergy fives. Oh, I have <laughs> the. Uh, you know what I mean? Like it'd be yeah, like yeah, yeah. iPhone versus Samsung. I, it depends on say like there's we'll always still a, have connectivity. Yeah, and I think sometimes there's a jump in technology. So what I mean, like even in like um, poorer countries, right? Yeah. So if people having a landline is expensive, right? But why? Where it's cheaper? like yeah, and like having a cell phone became cheaper. So they everybody jumped towards a cell phone. So like everyone totally. has a cell phone, maybe two, three yeah. cell phones. <laughs> yeah, totally. In yeah. India, it's like that's that's kind of how it is. And they're and the uh, everything is cheaper. Like what you're paying is cheaper in in like your monthly bill or whatever uh-huh. it is, right? For us, it's still Canada is top like one of the most expensive phone bills in the world. Yeah, it's, I'm paying a lot. Right, and in bill. India, it's like like where I mean, where so you get like uh, a gig a day or something in India. It's like oh, it's like nothing, and it's very cheap. So you're like thirty gigs. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, essentially. Month. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, but they also have because they have the population yeah, and they can yeah, put they the price scale. lower. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. And like in Canada, why it is more expensive is also like we're a vast land <laughs> and yeah, we're spread yeah. across. And it's like in order to connect to everybody, it's like that takes money. Yeah, yeah. The um the principle here, I just like to throw this in there is called economies of scale. Mm-hmm. So the more you can, so if you go to a manufacturer and you're like, I'm yeah. gonna buy ten of these, mm-hmm. they're like, okay, I'm gonna price you this, but you're like, I'm gonna buy fifty thousand of these. Mm-hmm. They're like, they'll give you a discount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's how yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like work. why it, like there's likely it could be cheaper in India too to get because yeah, you're things. buying like a billion <laughs> of the things. So like, oh, this order is huge. We can afford to yeah. give you a discount. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah interesting. Yeah, and any other thoughts about uh, biomechanics, Tesla thing? No, I think it's always good to do. I do want to buy it. The thing with this. Gonna, oh wait, wait, what are you talking about? The I was gonna say like Tesla. Oh, uh, okay. I was gonna say stats uh, apps. I was gonna say like it would be cool to get an uh, iWatch now. Vish, no, it's like again, yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait and see. Hasn't. Wait, what is what is your uh, impediment towards getting the Apple Watch? Having something on my wrist. <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you just don't want that. Like, I've left the watch a long time ago. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 true. It's I know like, what you mean. yeah. Yeah, 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 I get The you. freedom of nothing on me. <laughs> fair. That is fair. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Yeah. So, you, oh, yeah, you'd need to. It's like it's been like, a long time since, you've since had I've one. had anything on my wrist. So, it's like to get used to doing that again would be annoying. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose. I, I just think it would be it would just be it would just be so integrated in your current model. You know, you're like you have a yeah. Tesla, you have the <laughs> Tesla app, and you have an iWatch. Right, you know, right. Like no, I, I have great uses for it. Like I don't have I can use the Apple Watch for paying Apple Pay. Yeah, that's what I mean. So right. Like, There's a lot of great uses that I see from it. Yeah. It's, it's 
Um, and you and you are that type of person that would use them. Like, I would oh, never yeah. use it. Like you, you were the first one to use uh, Apple uh, Touch Pay. Yeah, yeah, of course, and man. That's we that's go, the... we used to go to the theaters, and then <laughs> we would always have. That's so funny. We used to go to the theaters with COVID, <laughs> but now, now, like. I remember you'd never bring your wallet. No, you I don't want it. Your phone. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, so you, you would be the archetype of somebody that would actually use these products well. Right. Again, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, because I wanted to get rid of the wallet, this was the way to do it, right? That, yeah, that yeah. Apple Pay was the right way to do it. And then it's just having to put on a watch where I haven't had anything on me. Yeah, but, right? but, but think about but like, what, No, no, but the uh-huh. thing was, the other thing was like, I was removing the wallet. I- oh. Like removing having to carry the wallet. Yeah. Where I'm here, I'm adding something on to me. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, but I think the benefits would I do see the there, cons, uh, Of course, yeah. There are like, a lot of cases. Saying, like, when you swim. Uh, you I, think, I think the thing is, I think when... Even even the walks that you go on now, right? Yeah. You can... You can it's like, it just builds that and what, what i find and it probably like how is, much mile you're walking like how yeah, much yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and then you have those rings it's like oh i need to keep like even mm-hmm. i do that i'm like i try and hit ten thousand steps so i'm like oh i need to go out for another walk because <laughs> i'm not there yet you know yeah, yeah, yeah. but but if i didn't have that biome like if i didn't have that feedback and i was just using intuition i'd be like guessing all the time like did i walk enough today i don't know right you know it's just better to see it and be like oh i should go for a walk mm-hmm. you know and and one thing that like my Garmin does it. So I think I'm sure Apple does it even better, but it shows you the times of days that you're more active than not. So you're like, Oh, like, I'm, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, just yeah, yeah, added yeah. information. Right, right, you know, right. you're like, Oh, I typically you exert more energy right. at this time. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, it just reminded me like, like again with the stats was like, when you we were asking me, what was the meme that your sister sent about like opening your phone, but only using those three apps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it's like, you go look at the, um, oh, screen time yeah, yeah, totally. and it's like wait oh, wait yeah true <laughs> there, there, there's a great example of intuition right when i saw that meme of like yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah so so the meme is um you charge your phone for the day just to use the same three apps the next day and which were I, the th- three social media apps right yeah twitter yeah. instagram facebook yeah and i asked you right away oh do you use more than three apps and you're like i think so but again we're using intuition so yeah. it's, it's cognitive guesswork mm-hmm. right and typically when you guess, you're incorrect. So then you're like, why don't you just check screen time? So I open screen time. And I'm like, oh, I use a lot of different apps. But yeah. using, like looking at the meme itself, my mind gravitated towards, I only use three apps. Right. Yeah, that's what you said. That's what I said. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, I only use three apps. Right. But then like when you, when you force me to look at the statistics, it's like, you don't just use three apps. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I'm saying like, it's important to have numbers, man. Yeah. I think metrics information. Are, information yeah. is so yeah. important. Mm-hmm. Unless it's just straight guesswork, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this is a great segue. Speaking of information, um, anything else? No, no, no. Okay. So speaking of information, I started cooking now. And one thing that I found really fascinating about cooking is you start to see what food. So I, I read this book called In Defense of Food. Mm-hmm. So the basic premise is eat food, mostly plants, not too much. Okay. That, that's all he says. And that's his like mantra. And I get it now. So like you think, we think that food is like this power bar that I'm eating, right? But it's what, that's more of like a chemical concoction created to elicit some sort of neurotransmitter Mm -hmm, in my body mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. like um, element that I need, like protein, right? But I've noticed that because because I track my weight and I track my my intake and like all that, um, I've noticed that natural food, even though calorically, I'm eating more than I was when I was trying to lose weight. Mm-hmm. It actually naturally makes me lose weight. But my question was like, why is this happening? Mm-hmm. But it's because I'm, I'm eating real food and the real food isn't packed with fillers yeah. that hold on to mm-hmm. other things. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And then Tara was saying like, when you were eating out, there's a lot of sodium yeah. because sodium's preservatives. Right. Mm-hmm. So she's like, you're probably losing weight because it's just water weight. Mm-hmm. Like, because I don't eat those soda, even though she, cause so I put a lot of salt, remember those fries and like, yeah, I, yeah, so yeah, much, yeah. I was freaking out. I was like, oh man, right. is my sodium going to be really high? Mm-hmm. And then she was saying that even if you put like three tablespoons of sodium, like salt, sea salt, that's nothing compared to what's actual, the actual salt that's added as a preservative, mm-hmm. you know, you'll, you'll never, you need to eat so much salt to actually 
be the equivalent of what it is you eat in right. those processed foods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. and and that's an interesting paradigm to me because it makes me rethink food. Like, what is it I'm eating? Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but again, that's information. <laughs> you know, and I guess like also direct experience because I'm like contrasting making the like, well you're getting the information from both again in a sense. Oh, right, totally yeah yeah, yeah. Right. but by doing it and by, like yeah and seeing the biofeedback of it yeah. yeah 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 because all right so for example last night we ate uh chicken wings fried chicken and i had a beer mm-hmm. and then my dessert was ice cream mm-hmm. okay if i had gone out to a restaurant and eaten those exact same things mm-hmm. i would have felt really bad then like i would have felt heavier yeah the next day yeah, yeah. right but I woke up this morning. I was like, "Oh, I lost weight." I was like, "But my my caloric intake was like at the the maximum right. amount it should right. be." So, but I'm like, you know, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm eating something that if I had eaten the equivalent outside, it would have made me feel worse than just by cooking it. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And what one thing that Tara said that I thought was pretty fascinating is when you cook food. And you smell yourself cooking it, your body's actually releasing enzymes for digestion because mm. it knows it's about to eat. Yeah, and I was like, that makes so much sense. So like, you're priming your body, like, okay, we're about to intake food. Right, right. But think about the converse of that. If you just show up and you eat fast food, you're like, oh, I wasn't primed for this. Right. My body wasn't ready to eat yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, now yeah. you're just like filling it with a bunch of food, and it's like, whoa, what happened here? <laughs> Isn't that fa- like it's so simple, but. But information, yeah, biofeedback. We, we are robots. The fact that your body does that, mm-hmm. that like, how did it know? Yeah. It, it knew, it's, but like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a program thing. It's a program, <laughs> you know. Right. We, we are literally piloting robots. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, how did it? It. It's. We have this like super intelligence, not in a spiritual woo woo way, but we have a spiritual yeah. intelligence inside of our bodies, which is like unaware to us. Mm-hmm. I had no idea that's what my body was doing, priming itself to eat. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, so many things happening inside. So me. many things. <laughs> crazy. Or, or another crazy one is, uh, when you when you are stressed, like if you think about a stressful situation, your body automatically releases anti-inflammatory, right. or like in, inflammation. Sorry, it releases inflammation because okay. stress actually manifests as inflammation. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that's pretty crazy as well. Like, there, th- we have this. We're piloting this robot. We almost know nothing about, and that's why I advocate for feedback, like mm-hmm. like metrics. Yeah, because I don't really know what's going on. Like my my conscious mind is subjectively guessing upon things. In in a rosy hue, you know, because it's like, oh, I'm I'm obviously doing better. I, of course, I drank like twelve glasses mm-hmm, of water, mm-hmm. and then if you actually like look at the calculation, you're like, oh, I drank no water today. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but in my head, it's like I drank water. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Fascinating. Information. So important. <laughs> but okay. So speaking of information as well, yeah. um, what I'm finding, wh- one of the biggest things I found with like cooking food as well is there is a huge socioeconomic and education gap between people who are healthy and not healthy. Yeah. So, so well, one thing Mm -hmm. remember i tried to make the jerk chicken yep and i was in the grocery store and like there was these these jamaican dumplings you can make and then i had to put it back because it was just filled with like aluminum xiphoid gum i'm like what is this it was like (laughs) a dollar right yeah and and in terms of socioeconomics you break that down twofold one it was a dollar so you're thinking okay it's cheap i can make 16 portions for a dollar that'll feed my family Mm mm-hmm and two, I don't actually understand what these ingredients do to my body. Yeah. And why is there such a high case of like high cholesterol, diabetes, uh, all this stuff in like lower socioeconomic mm-hmm. families? Mm-hmm. It's, it's because of it, it. It isn't about a lack of resources. I don't think it's a lack of resources. Well, all right. It is. A lack I, I've of resources, seen this. But... I've seen it before, but yeah. It, um. Good groceries are expensive, but but not no, no but all right, totally. I agree with you. I agree with you. Or healthy food. Healthy food is so expensive. So there, there's a obvious mm-hmm. um, 
that that's more of a tangible socioeconomic gap. Right. But for that dollar, you could have just bought like sweet potatoes instead of, um, instead of the fried packet of right. But but that that's an educational problem. I'm saying I think that we have a socioeconomic and education problem mm-hmm. surrounding food, mm-hmm. and I think that's what perpetuates a lot of cultural stereotypes. Like for example, uh, Filipinos typically have diabetes and uh, heart heart problems. Yeah. But what is the food that they're eating? Like we eat constant fat combined with sugar. Mm-hmm. Fat and sugar leads to diabetes and heart disease. Yeah, yeah. So when we say like the stereotype is that Filipinos have diabetes and heart disease, it's like, well, yeah, it's built into our culture because all of our food has that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. you were saying too with the uh, Indian food, right? Yeah. The desserts. Like you don't like them. But I love your desserts because it's, <laughs> it's the Filipino in me. It's like it's just like sugar, like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you eat a lot of it, sure, yeah, yeah. yeah no, no, but, but it's, it's but, literally just sugar. Yeah, yeah. yeah like yeah, when yeah, I bit yeah. into it, I'm like, oh, this is just a sugar covered, like not not even sugar covered. It's just sugar packed together with like lard. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Tastes well, we're, we're yeah again like they find what was it? I think it was India that was who found fine sugar or like who? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, it does make sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But but didn't you say there's like also high cases of diabetes? Yeah, in, yeah, a lot of rice. Well? Yeah, a, a lot of rice, a lot of sugar. Sure, a lot of mangoes. You yeah. know. Yeah, fascinating, right? Mm-hmm. It's like what we put into our bodies really. The thing was, affects. I don't know where I saw this, but it was like because those are local, though, right? Like, okay, in those areas. Um, this is only local food. Like when you're living here, we have access to more, more food, yeah, totally. more food. Like they're coming in from other parts of the world, for other sure. types of vegetables that we can use. Yeah, for sure. But it's not always like that in other parts, right? For sure. Yeah. That I they agree. can only deal with what they have locally. But, but you know, you know what I find really interesting about this? Also the global psychology of it. So you're saying like locally, right? So when, when me and Tara were spending all that time in the Philippines, the best food was the home cooked food. Mm-hmm. Every bit of food that we bought outside tasted really gross. Mm. Right? Well, I went with like locally in groceries. The, uh, right, right. Home. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so <laughs> the home the home cook food was all food that they gathered from trees. Okay. Like literally, like it was yeah, around yeah, the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. So like, oh, there's a mango tree. I'm just right. gonna grab some mangoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. my like my aunt lives. You've been there, so my aunt lives in front of the lake. Mm-hmm. So or not like the ocean. <laughs> so. So there's like fisheries yeah. and like when the fishermen would come in, yeah. whatever they caught, they usually just give my aunt, my grandma or whatever, like a couple fish. They're mm-hmm. like, oh, here's a couple excess. Like mm-hmm. we have thousands. You could have two. Right. So they'll eat that. And that's what they were serving us. And we're mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, this tastes amazing. Right. But all of the food from that area was built off of ingredients shipped to that area. Right. We even went to the, the grocery store mm-hmm. and all the milk was powdered milk. Yeah. Which is not an expensive milk because like economically yeah, 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 yeah. it's not, they can't afford. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The, right. Like, there, the, there is no, actually this is so funny. Well, it's cause it's, it's, it. it's different things, right? Like how, how you preserve the milk, for instance, the best way would be dried milk. Yeah. yeah I mean, powdered milk. Powdered milk. Yeah. 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 Really, because, because in that area, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's warm. It's kind yeah, of far. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How do you refrigerate this thing? Yeah, how, you totally. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. And what, what's funny, what I think is so interesting about traveling is because Tara was like vegan before mm-hmm. we left on that trip. Mm-hmm. We, we went to like Peru and then we went to uh, Costa Rica mm-hmm. and then we went to Vancouver. And our next, when we were in Vancouver, yeah. we were about to go to Asia. And I had to give her like this talk mm-hmm. of it's going to be very difficult for you to stay vegan on this, on the rest of this trip. And she's like, what do you mean? There's going to be things I could eat there, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you'll see what I mean. And literally everything there was, you're either going to eat crap, which is like preserved food because you're trying yeah, to yeah, remain yeah. vegan. You're going to eat nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you're going to eat healthy, mm-hmm. which is local food. Like mm-hmm. they, they will kill the pig. And they will harvest the rice. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like like you're saying that stuff in groceries mm-hmm. is bad and it is bad. Mm-hmm. But isn't it funny that the perception is, oh, I shopped at a grocery store. I must be affluent when you're in that country. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
but then we're going there being like, oh my god, you have food off the land? But they're like, that's poor people food. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you're just giving us fish from mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. ocean. Like, they, they have fisher fishermen that only eat fish. Right. Because that's all they caught. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, poor yeah. people food. Like, right, right. you can't afford going to the grocery yeah. store. Mm-hmm. But you could see that the poor, the quote unquote poor people are jacked and then the affluent people are unhealthy. <laughs> yeah. But it's because what are you putting in your body? Mm-hmm. You know, fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, over here it's more like. But, but it's, it's the lack of education. There. Yeah. They, over here it's more like, like, yeah, but over here it's like to buy the better groceries, you've got to be a bit more affluent. True, yeah, because we because the better groceries are organic. We can't buy farmed. fresh fish; everything's frozen here. Yeah, totally. Yeah, right. yeah, for sure. One thing at least, for but, instance. But think think of it this way: like the organic groceries that we get, yeah, are typically locally sourced, mm-hmm. meaning they come from farms. But in those in those developing countries, the farm is all around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they don't see the abundance that they have because they're looking to us and being like, well, Westerners shop in grocery stores. So if I want to be affluent too, I need to shop in a grocery store. Mm-hmm. No, you disagree? I don't know. I, I don't know my experience over there enough to say because everything seems to be like when I was there, they would go and buy fresh fish, for instance. Like, okay. Okay. Interesting. But you also live in a, in a tourist area. Goa, right? It's like... Well, no, 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 but I wasn't there. I'm just saying in in general, like for wherever my experience was there, more like buying fresh fish. Like they would still buy, even in Mumbai, right? So it's like. Oh, really? eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody bought in a grocery store? Uh, No. At least not to my knowledge. So where where my dad's family's from, they have wet markets. Mm -hmm. So we we would buy from the wet market because it's all local, quote unquote, organic. Became this like joke. My dad would be like, oh, it's organic. (laughs) But it's like, it's literally... (laughs) I just pulled this out of the river. So like organic to us is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is real food here. <laughs> this is right. Like, yeah. yeah to yeah. us. Yeah. We have to make up this label of organic. But yeah. To them it's like this food from the river. I right. don't understand. Yeah. That's yeah, what my yeah, dad yeah. would make fun of us. Like <laughs> you're eating organic food. <laughs> yeah, but so. It's technically right. All well, right. It's right. But yeah. It, yeah. It technically. I mean, using our labels, but. Oh damn. I forgot where I was going with that one. Uh, grocery stores. Organic food. Oh damn, I don't remember. But irregardless, uh, yeah, I, I feel like there is there is a perception of buying things from a grocery store that gives you a higher status than if you had just picked it off of the yeah, yeah, yeah. the ground, right? And I think that's that's like the wrong mentality that we're starting to figure out. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's almost like grass is always greener. And we're looking to them like, wow, you have food that grows out of the ground. We're going to call it organic food. And that's mm-hmm. amazing. Right. And they're looking at us like, oh, you have the money to buy something from a grocery store, mm-hmm. you know? But even though it tasted worse, like going to those, I'm not a fan of Filipino food. So <laughs> going to those like restaurants and buying Filipino food, I was always like, oh, it's like, it doesn't taste well, good. Well, I never liked but like general they, restaurant food. Like, like, oh, like yeah. at least for okay, Indian fair. food, it's more like the home cooked food is always better than the restaurant food. I'm actually finding that now by cooking from home, like, like Tara and I were making the joke that we don't even want to buy food anymore yeah. because it just tastes better when I make it. Yeah. Because it's Cause like, you know what's in it too. Yeah, Cause you know what's in it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. But doesn't that just come down to again, knowledge? Cause like I would have had to know how to cook these foods. Yeah. You know? But they, don't they say, I don't know, I thought they said, like, it's cheaper to make your own food. It is versus. cheaper, but but time for money. So I was going to say that. See, so that's the thing. Like, like yeah. a single mom trying to provide for her family. She has to work two jobs. Right. I guess in She's that like, sense. I'm just going to buy you some KFC, bro. Right. Like, I got, got nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. There, I feel like fundamentally food is an essential part of who we are as human beings. And the way we're presenting it is not correct. I like it's the foundation of who we are. Mm-hmm. You know, F- proper food, proper intake leads to proper nutrition for your brain. You could think better. You know, there's a big thing in school, like if in the Breakfast Club, little little kids who didn't have food, they would bring food because you can't learn 
all day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's like this whole thing in yeah, yeah, Canada, yeah, yeah, yeah. Canada. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so like, if it's the foundation of everything we do, why do you place like zero emphasis on it? Like, we have the Canadian food guide, but what does that even mean? Like, I didn't learn about nutrition in school. I learned about that through like, well, Tara actually going to school for it mm -hmm. and reading additional books, mm -hmm. you know, but it was always, it was always like, it was, I'll, I'll put it like this. So growing up, one of my biggest fears is needles. Right. And the, that was because my parents were always like, Oh, when you're older, you're going to have diabetes. And I was like, <laughs> I just assumed, like my parents assumed, that it happens to everyone because everyone in my family has diabetes. Right. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. an assumption that yeah, yeah. they're like, oh, it runs in our family. We're all going to get it. It's fine. Right. And I was like, I was so deathly afraid of this. But understanding how food works, I'm like, no, we, we won't get diabetes. I will not get diabetes because I'm not drinking the 12 cans of Coke that you're drinking. Mm -hmm. But they don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? They, mm -hmm. They're like, they they don't see the connection between food and your body and health yeah. and health yeah. right but i think just by understanding that simple premise it like frees you up from so many things but it goes back to it being the foundation of what we do as humans right and we place zero emphasis on it mm -hmm. like my my whole family just assumed we're all gonna get it's a part of life that's why they invented medicine <laughs> you're right i don't know do you, do you find that in your own experience or is that just me um, well, it wasn't necessarily told like that to me, but I know a lot of people that have had it. Uh, so it's like a subconscious thing. You're like, oh, it's just like, we're old. We're all going to break well, down. Well, yeah, I, I think, but then I, like, I don't know what age it was like realizing that it's, it's the rice. It's the rice that's going to cause right, this. Right, right. Totally. But, but then, but then, okay. So, so you, you started the journey of like, oh, it's the rice. Okay. Yeah. But it's, but then. Or it's like, I guess, I don't know. So maybe I read that information, like where. Like, cause, cause you look at, you can look at, um, like what is the predominant issues in other parts of the world, okay. right? Each country has something. And what is the reason for causing that? I think I must've read somewhere it was the rice, yeah, yeah. right? To cause diabetes yeah, and all that stuff. Yeah. But, but it's not only the rice. Cause like, what do you eat with the rice? Usually Coca-Cola, right? I'm talking about Philippines here. Right. Yeah. So like they'll usually have like, like, like having a Coca-Cola, in the Philippines and in a lot of parts of the world who are like developing, it's like an affluent symbol mm -hmm. being able to afford pop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. I think there's two things too. It's probably, yeah, the, like the food, but also like the lack of exercise. I think this is another thing that also happens. Okay. Totally. 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 A hundred percent. It goes, it goes it's, hand it, in hand. Yeah. Right. But, but more, than anything and i could speak to this myself mm. it's always nutrition before exercise i can well, sit yeah, here, yeah yeah i i can i can sit here and eat just salads all day and i'll be still super healthy mm -hmm. i'll lose a bunch of weight mm -hmm. i'll be healthy mm -hmm. without any physical mm -hmm. exercise the amount of exercise you really need to do and they found this in the blue zones mm -hmm. is you just need to walk like 30 minutes a day yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it yeah right because the rest of it comes down to like what you're fueling your body with you know, so I, I agree with you, but I think more foundationally, we need to focus on food education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Right? Because mm -hmm. just walking to the bus stop, walking to work, or even in those like um, developing countries, walking to buy the groceries is good enough. You're just walking to buy the groceries, you're mm -hmm. coming back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's enough exercise. Obviously, you could do more. But, but you need to be doing that daily, right? You know what I mean? Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Not like... If you go to groceries once a week, no, 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 <laughs> it's, not no, the same it's 30 minutes a day. Like I yeah. think that was the blue zone thing. Okay. Yeah. Like around 30 minutes a day. Right. Sure. But we also don't realize how much we do walk without even like, like 30 minutes set aside, let's say, cause you walk through your house, you walk like you still walk. You're not yeah, like fully sedentary I guess. all day. Right. Right. Like you still walk to like walk to the, um, the kitchen you walk to the bathroom sure, you yeah, walk sure. you know we, yeah, yeah. we're walking but i mean 30 minutes of additional exercise like actually putting aside 30 mm -hmm. minutes like that's what they said yeah yeah but but yeah if, if you just follow those two rules of like watch your input and just do a little bit of exercise you will curb a lot of like old age illnesses that were assumed to be 
like just unavoidable. Normal. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got yeah. yeah, right, right. I think this is one of the things that really plagued me growing up, like thinking about diabetes. Mm-hmm. And I think that's also why I hated needles because I was like, <laughs> oh my god, at one point in my life, I'm gonna have all these needles constantly being put inside of me. Yeah. Well, even if they did say diabetes, I wouldn't know what that means. You know, what I mean is like. Oh how to deal with diabetes i didn't know anything oh, about injections that. bro yeah but that's yeah. not something that i i would have known oh okay okay you know what i mean oh, so you're like what is this diabetes you yeah i just know this diabetes yeah. okay i don't think it was like you're gonna be continuously injected I, oh, this no, is no, not my, something that i thought no about. my parents always just threw that in there like you know what diabetes is <laughs> you gotta you know, inject yourself all day like, oh my god <laughs> well that's the thing I, I never i would not have known i don't know a lot of the stuff of like how to treat something <laughs> true i guess it goes back to like my mom being a nurse and like she's always freaking me out you know <laughs> Yeah, but I I think I think one of the I think one of the biggest services we could do is just restructure. Like, if there's one thing that I think would help humankind is just restructure our relationship with food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even more so than like people talking like psychedelics and like living your dreams and yeah, like yeah, all this yeah. stuff. It's like. Right. You put the foundation of it all is food because mm-hmm. like yeah you do all the psychedelics in the world but if you're you're eating like chips and pop all day and you're like oh, i'm so depressed it's like maybe feed your body some nutrients <laughs> that it needs you know yeah yeah and it, it does i mean food does have a huge impact emotionally on your on your body like yeah. how, how you deal with the world and like how yeah. ha- like healthy mind healthy body like one of those yeah, you know 100 actually yeah. it's funny i was even uh i was saying to my i don't know if i mentioned this last time but my sister i sent her a picture of the food that i was eating and i was like because i knew how to get the shot mm-hmm. so i made this like crazy breakfast of like i knew these these like the hormones that this food would give me would give me like enough serotonin to get through mm-hmm. having to go get the shot, mm-hmm. you know? And she was like, wow, you're really that like afraid. But I'm like, no, but the intelligent thing to do is like, if I know that I need serotonin, how do I build serotonin into my body food? Mm-hmm. You know, like, like why would I, like if you eat serotonin deprived food, you know what I mean? It's like, it's so simple. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you don't need a magic pill for your depression because the magic pill is food. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, obviously there are people with like clinical depression, like totally, but, but in terms of like transient depression, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like I'm feeling kind of moody today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you could just really alleviate that with simple food. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Food is, uh, yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. That I guess isn't really taught, right? It's, so. and, and that's what I think is the biggest disservice to uh, humanity right now. Above all else, who cares about like income inequality, all that? It stuff. seems it's like yeah. Like, it seems food. like yeah. The ones who know more about it are either have done their own, have had the time to do their own. See what I'm saying? So research. Like, why? Why did I have to go through such an arduous journey mm-hmm. to figure out that food is the foundation of everything? And then all right, so people who listen to this, they're all like, "Of course." It's like yeah, you could say of course. But do you really know what that means? You know, it's like, of course food affects your body. It's like, yeah, no duh. But now break that down for me. How do I how do I use that information? Mm-hmm. They won't know. Yeah. So it's like we all know, we all know that food is the foundation, but we don't know how to properly utilize food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Miseducation. Yeah. How to utilize it. That's probably better. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. like I can hear my mom now. She's like, "Of course, food is I'm like <laughs> all right, mom. How does it work then?" Uh, I, said, I don't know. Just yeah. eat better I mean, food. there's been like age-old like slogans talking about food. Yeah, there has been, right? but, but then how do you use it? Like, how do you utilize yeah. that? How do you make it? Like the canned food right. guide, right? Before yeah. it was like, "Eat this, this, and this." Okay, mm-hmm. why? You know, like, what does that have to do with mm-hmm. anything? Yeah. Or maybe that's just because we're in the information society now that with the internet and we're we're like I think so. I think we're there's primed some to, to seek yeah. out the information. Yeah. Whereas before we we just let information fall onto yeah, us, yeah, yeah. right? Because I wouldn't have known any of this stuff if I didn't buy those books off Amazon. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like we look at patterns like that's something that humans do. That's how okay. we've like you see 
what works, what doesn't. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you yeah, see totally. the pattern of what's going on. Yeah. We tend to, to always It's actually that. how science works, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. I agree mm-hmm. with you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, anything else about... Uh... Actually, wait, wait. Actually, this is, this is so related. So, um, Sam Harris was talking about free will. I'm about to post, like, a bunch of... If you listen to this... Uh, I've already posted all these videos. <laughs> I've, I've spammed your feed. Sorry. Uh, but I'm about to post all of yeah. uh, these videos. And one of the things that he said, and I had never thought of it like this. Mm. So I, you know, like I always say, so I believe we, we both believe in, there's no such thing as free will because mm-hmm. there's always a cause to something Yeah, that's hard for people to wrap their heads around. Right. So one thing he said, and I was like, this is so true. Uh, so if I ask you to think of a thought, right? You, you think about any thought you want, right? If you'll think about like, oh, this show that I watched, uh, think about the video game I'm about to play, all that stuff, right? But you can't trace the origin of that thought, mm-hmm. right? And then that will give you the assumption that you have free will because you're like, well, there's no origin. I right. just made it up. Right. But what he said was you're not privy to the neurophysiological component of your your thoughts Mm -hmm. so neuro like mind physiological body so like he's like it might have been hot in the room so it primed you to think about this or you might have been hungry so you're thinking about this right you know what i mean every thought is based off of a subconscious bodily reaction Mm -hmm. you know which goes back to food it's like if you give your body the incorrect fuel then the neurophysiological response will be negativity right yeah you might think of a bad movie like you're like oh i'm feeling really sad but it's because neurophysiologically you, you didn't give your body the food mm-hmm. so your body's priming your mind mm-hmm. to think about sad things right you know? right your 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 body creates an emotion which creates a thought which creates a feeling mm-hmm. which creates an action right but like, you know what I mean? Like, what an interesting way to say that. And he's like, if we're subject to neurophysiological responses, everything, that's the cause right there. That's mm-hmm. the cause and effect. Why do you think that thought? You might not be able to consciously know, but your body forced you to think that thought. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so watch what you put in your body, bro. Yeah. Isn't he, he was the, like the, 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 the head peas for like this free will thing, right? Like or, he's the main guy. He's the main that says guy. there's no free will. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he actually wrote a book. I bought the book. <laughs> I'm gonna read it. Uh, it's <laughs> called like Free Will. It's funny because like it's called Free Will, but the whole book's about having no free will. Right. It's like, yeah. Well, it's that's a, bit of a that's, troll move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyways, okay. So final final topic: UFOs, bro. Now there UFO. are so many. I still haven't watched the 60 Minutes thing. It's on my list. I'm just so busy, but uh, there's so much evidence towards it now, and I'm so shocked that nobody cares, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but like Sam Harris was saying too, like when he brought up the UFO thing, that we're so like psychologically taxed that it just comes up as a bit of information. Yeah, you know that it's like he, his example is like, oh, today Obama wore a maroon tie or something mm-hmm, like that. Mm-hmm. It's like no different than that. Oh, mm-hmm. there's alien footage. They're like, oh, that's cool. But like, I don't, I, I don't understand why nobody else is talking about this. Or you sound crazy if you talk about it, but it's like, but did you see all those news outlets that are talking about it too? And they're right. like, oh, that's a hoax. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I was what I was saying earlier. Was I just think that it, nobody can do anything about it. It's not affecting my life. So true. Right now, COVID is affecting my life. Yeah, so you know this I mean? is like that's the opportune more, moment to like drop yeah, it. Yeah, I think that's probably what they were thinking when they dropped it. <laughs> yeah, true. Psychologically, no one's like freaking out. Imagine if this was like a normal, like if there's no COVID. Normal time. Yeah. And we talked about UFOs. Mm-hmm. What a crazy panic people would be in. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe slightly. I don't know, actually. We won't know until you Enter. actually do that, but. Until we can like all see it. Imagine if like a mothership appeared in the sky. I think you have to. See. Yeah, I think you have to physically see it to really. At least now, like you know, well, one thing. One thing. Um, Sam Harris was saying was uh, that COVID really showed us the flaws in human 
society mm-hmm. not not in terms of its infrastructure because we know that's flawed but the fact that it's been a year and a half and some people still don't believe it's real some people still think it's yeah, a hoax yeah, yeah, yeah. right he's like what would that what does that say about humanity we can't agree upon anything yeah but that's always been like that totally right? so totally. and i think the only way that we would all agree oh well, actually i don't even know anymore no i mean right now no i was, I was my, let me finish my okay, example okay, we'll okay. see so if a mothership appeared in the sky that we always saw, like the sun, it wouldn't go away. But do, but maybe people would just say, "Oh, that's a no." I think majority, yeah. If everyone can see it, sure. No, but if everyone can see it, I I feel like so. So you said sure. Our assumption is that we'd all agree. But now I'm starting to think maybe people would be like, "Oh, that's a hologram from uh from the army." Yeah, I just don't know if there's gonna be a majority of those kinds of people. Like, if you can physically see it, I think that would. That, Might make that's a what difference. would jar us into yeah. that thing. Maybe. Yeah. Cause I, like, because you can't see COVID, I guess. People are acting all like this. But, like... True. Right? And then they're against the types of rules, these lockdowns and things like that, right? Right, right, right. It's like indirectly affecting freedoms. your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I know I've said this before, but I'm very excited to see where the alien thing leads us. Yeah. The Joe Rogan said it like a uh, saw a little clip of it when he was talking to Neil deGrasse. It was kind of interesting. It was like, they might not have any aliens in them. It's just like drones. Like what which, we sent to totally Mars. Which makes sense actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Mm-hmm. And that could be why it's able to like teleport because there's nothing, there's no like, like no uh, organic matter in there that would be right. disrupted by teleportation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it might have like a, like where it's probably staying is probably in the water. Like if it's not leaving Earth, but staying here. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Oh. Well, hold on. Actually, this just blew my mind. Think about it. <laughs> that actually logically makes sense. Because if there were physical, like organic matter aliens in those ships, they would need some sort of way to fuel themselves, like food. Yeah. Or like, like right. whatever their version of food is, whatever yeah, yeah. their version of food and water and air sure. is. But how do you bring that along with you resource wise? Like mm-hmm. even humans, right? Even if they had like, let's say a pill form, you're going to run out of that pill form of food, mm-hmm. of sustenance mm-hmm. eventually. But if you have a robot that's powered by like, let's say hydro, hydro energy, that's why it goes in the water you can run experiments slash observations on us for longer. Like, uh, like, sure. like, 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 like rovers that we bring to Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there were humans, you'd have to bring oxygen, food, water for humans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the rovers that we sent to Mars, they're solar powered. Mm-hmm. So they don't need, they don't need to like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. any energy. Or, I mean, yeah. uh, sustenance things. So it, it like actually makes way more sense that it's empty. Mm-hmm. From a strategic standpoint, mm-hmm. it makes more sense that they're drones yeah. and they're filled with aliens. Mm-hmm. Oh, I believe that. Oh, I believe that a lot now. That actually makes way more sense. Then, because why would aliens be visiting us? Right. They're probably observing us yeah. with their drones. Mm-hmm. Whoa, that's so trippy. Because, like, there we have so many satellites up there. Like, there's no way to find one. Like, you know what I mean? One alien or what? Or capture the... Yeah, Like, true. if they're coming in. True, if they're constantly coming in. Yeah. That's very true. Or or what if, what if they were a species of robot? So, like, look at the trajectory that we're on. Mm-hmm. If we create AI, we're going to create robots. What if those drones are, like, their home world is, like, a robotic world? Right, and it's really or it's like, like a it's like ancient humans that have done this. Remember, like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. that's yeah. their machines have left behind. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that that was another theory because they yeah. found it like buried underground. Right. Yeah. So you what? So what do you think that they're like drones from ancient humans or? I don't know. Oh, I mean, we don't know that, right? Maybe we don't know. But they could be more likely drones. Like, we can that, agree that on actually, drones. We do agree on drones because that actually is so logical. Right. Because yeah. we would do that. Yeah. Although, although the caveat here is, don't try and solve a problem using your own thought. No, no, no. Because no. maybe, maybe there are there are aliens in there. Right. But like we're using our our own logic. Right. To solve the problem. Right. 
But I'm saying like we would we I don't know wouldn't the satellites be detecting ships coming in and going? Yeah, well, yeah, they should. Yeah, because we have so many out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess we can only just wait and find out. <laughs> yeah. But but I think Sam Harris was saying too. It's like it's so troubling that because people were asking, DMing him, like, "What do you think about this whole alien thing?" And he's like, "Oh, it could be pretty detrimental because then you find out that your government's been lying to you for a long time about." Aliens. Well, maybe the American government. Remember, that we, our Canadian government oh, yeah, hasn't right, been lying. Right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Touche. Like, yeah, they've the been Canadian pretty government. open about their information. I guess. Actually, a lot of a lot of governments have been the Italian government too. Apparently, mm-hmm. super open about aliens. Yeah. But they just don't get as much media coverage. Yeah, it's just only America. <laughs> That's the main. Yeah, because they're like <laughs> the media hub of the world, right? Yeah, so. Exactly. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, all the alien footage is from America, too. Like, uh, even if it's from Costa Rica, it was sent to America, and America's promoting it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All right. Or more, 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 it's probably more like, we don't know what this is. Can you look into it? Like, Oh, true, true. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> for sure. You guys have the best tech. You yeah. guys know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very excited. Mm-hmm. It, it would be weird. It would, you know, be, like, really weird if we find out that there's aliens, we find out that there's a whole human race out there, but nothing changes on a societal level. <laughs> like, sort of like COVID, right? And then remember, as soon as COVID got alleviated, then um, Israel and Palestine started fighting again. <laughs> and it's like, did you not learn anything during that pause? You know, Right, yeah. Because we're, we're, at our core, we're waiting to jump back in mm-hmm. to our human tendencies. Yeah, it's yeah, weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Until next time. Any final thoughts? I don't know. Uh, check your stats, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And uh, always keep looking up. You, wait, you know what freaks me out now? I, I know you used to do this all the time as a kid, and I always said it freaked me out. But you would always look up at the sky and just, like, watch the space. Remember mm-hmm. we'd, we'd hang yeah, out yeah, in front yeah, of yeah. my house and, yeah, yeah, like... Yeah. Well, our houses because we're neighbors, but like we look at the sky and then I, it would always freak me out because I'm like, it's too vast. Like it's, I can't look at it because there's so much out there right. and you're like, oh, but that's why I like it because it's so vast, you mm-hmm. know? Sometimes when I'm driving, because now I know about this alien thing, sometimes I'm driving and I'm looking <laughs> up at the sky as I'm driving. I'm like, wouldn't it be so freaky if like I just saw a blip of an alien? Right. Like, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. oh God, that's so scary. <laughs> I think the fear is that we you should in- have a dash cam. Oh, true, eh? True. Because then you would you would capture it on mm, camera. Yeah. I I think the greatest fear is fearing that we're even smaller. Because I already know consciously that we're a very small drop in the ocean of the universe. Mm-hmm. But to know that you're even smaller than the drop that you thought, meaning that there's a whole galactic empire there that we're not currently aware of, that's even crazier to me. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if it was aliens, and I mean, aliens are in there, I, I would think like how how like how lucky you found us in a way. I, I, if it is a vast universe. No, no, but but, but I mean, like, what if, what if there's a galactic empire out there? Like, what if they are? What what if what right. if? They, there's not just that one species, there's like multiple species, and yeah, they're yeah, like, yeah. oh, they're not really at our level yet, mm-hmm. let's just observe them for now. Yeah, this kind of reminds me of Star Trek, because they did that in Star Trek. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, okay. where it's like, I forgot it was one of the movies, it was like, they don't want to reveal themselves yet, because they're not... Advanced at, enough. At, yeah, to understand. Is it a movie? I gotta watch that now. It was, probably, it was just like a clip, I think. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't remember, like, as in... Is it the new Star Wars or the old... Uh, the I Star can't Trek remember, probably Star the new Trek? ones. New one? I like yeah, the new like ones. The I hated have... the old ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it was a new one, but it was like, like par- just a clip of it. Like not much. Oh, it's kind of like just it. like uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. passerby. Yeah. yeah. I forgot what they call that. That's like the prime prime directive mm-hmm. uh, in Star Trek. It's like their number one rule. Don't interfere with uh, unintelligent civilization. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that was what. Because they could think you're gods, or you could affect the trajectory of them, all that stuff. Yeah. Which is 100%, well, most likely what, if you are a super intelligent being, you'd probably think the exact same thing about humans. They're like, we should just not. It depends, I guess, on their their morals. Oh, yeah, or their motives. Their motives, their morals, yeah. True. 
Yeah. Because if they just wanted to take over resources, then they wouldn't really care. If they were so powerful, they it, they would just take us over. Like, why <laughs> would they even need to? Or or they would infiltrate our government. Sure. Yeah. That's why they say they're reptilians. Yeah. No. That's that's where I was going with that. That's crazy. <laughs> Like now you can't even throw out ridiculous theories anymore because you just don't know. You really, you can actually say I don't know now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Till next time, Sadie's Vish. Peace. Bye. Bye. All right. Hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all those fun things, and check out our sponsors: Zenro Clothing Co., Portion Bakery, and Podbean. Sadie's Vish. Peace. <laughs>